what if, what if a nation's actual DNA held a kind of secret history? You know, a living link right back to ancient times. Mm. Today, we're doing a deep dive into something called the Bulgarian gene. It's a topic that's well, sparking a lot of interest, but also some pretty fierce debate. Yeah, definitely. We've got a really fascinating stack of sources here. Scientific observations, history, some uh, emerging theories, too. We want to explore why the Bulgarian genome is raising eyebrows and what it might tell us about, well, human history and identity itself. Right. I mean, Bulgaria, you got to remember, it's been this crossroads for, what, over 6,000 years? Empires, warriors, mystics, survivors. The real melting pot, historically. Exactly. And our sources are suggesting that the genes of modern Bulgarians might be something like a unique genetic time capsule. And I think it's important to say this isn't just about Bulgaria, is it? It's really about what genetics more broadly can tell us. Things like continuity, resilience, mm -hmm. and just the sheer complexity of human migration and, well, survival. So how should people think about the information we're presenting? Yeah, good point. We're looking at scientific observations, theories. It's all meant to educate, maybe spark some conversation. It's definitely not meant to be taken as, you know, the final conclusive fact. Right. We're here to unpack the ideas, the debates around them. Exactly. Okay, so let's start with the big one, the really ancient stuff, what some researchers are calling the Thracian mystery. Ah, yes, the Thracians. We looked into this uh, landmark 2022 genetic study. They analyzed remains from Bulgarian burial mounds, like 8,000 years old. Incredible time frame. And what they found was, well, it was pretty stunning. Over 55% of the genetic markers from those ancient Thracians, they still exist in modern Bulgarians today. 55%? That's, that's huge. It is. It's described as one of the highest genetic continuities found anywhere in Europe. I mean, think about that. Modern Bulgarians are more genetically similar to ancestors from millennia ago than most other Europeans are. It's why some scholars are using that phrase, the genetic vault of pre-Roman Europe. A genetic vault. Wow. What's fascinating, I think, is how this challenges those uh, standard narratives we often hear about population replacement across Europe. Right, where one group comes in and mostly wipes out or replaces the previous one genetically. Right. Here it suggests something different. Persistence. A kind of living bridge to the past. Okay, but here's a question then. How much of that is, you know, truly unique genetic continuity versus maybe just geography? Hmm. The isolation factor. Yeah, could being in a mountainous region just mean less mixing over the centuries? Kept things more stable. That's a really key question. Yeah. And it's probably not an either situation, right? It's probably not. Geographic isolation almost certainly played a role. It acts like a buffer. It helps preserve older genetic lines. Mm -hmm. But the degree of continuity they're seeing in Bulgaria, uh -huh. especially when you compare it to other isolated regions in Europe, it suggests there might be something more going on. Like, well, perhaps a kind of cultural resilience. Maybe these populations were better at absorbing newcomers rather than being totally replaced by them. It's this complex dance between biology, culture, and history. Okay, that makes sense. It's never just one thing. Really is. So building on that ancient link, our sources also point to another really interesting thread. Some are calling it the Dacian gene. Ah, the Dacians. Another ancient group. Yeah, and its potential connection to uh, warrior resilience. Studies looking at why DNA haplogroups. So tracing the male line. Right. They show a pretty significant frequency of haplogroup I2A2 among Bulgarian men. And this group is often linked with those ancient Dacian and Balkan warrior tribes. And what's really intriguing, or maybe speculative, are the traits sometimes associated with this group. Okay, like what? Things like uh, strong skeletal density, maybe higher pain tolerance, even supposedly enhanced muscle recovery. Mm. Traits that, you know, you could imagine being useful in tough mountainous environments or for more martial lifestyle. Okay, wait. So this is where it gets really interesting for me. Is this why, anecdotally or not, Bulgarian powerlifters and wrestlers seem to do so well internationally. That's the provocative connection people are making. Our sources mentioned Bulgaria ranks in the top 20 globally for Olympic medals per capita. That's, that's pretty high for a smaller country. It is. And if you connect the dots back to the genetics, it suggests a potential predisposition for certain physical capabilities shaped over millennia. Got challenges how we think about physical potential. How solid is that link? I mean, correlation isn't causation, right? Exactly. And that's the pushback. While some scientists might lean towards 
genetics playing a role here. Mm. Many others are very quick to dismiss it. They'd say it's anecdotal, it's coincidence. So what's their explanation for the Olympic success then? Much more straightforward things. Strong training programs, cultural emphasis on those specific sports, good coaching, national investment opportunity. Right, the nurture side of the argument. Precisely. They'd argue that environment, dedication, the whole athletic system, that's what produces champions. The Hapo group is just, you know, interesting background info, not the driver. So it's still very much up for debate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It touches on that classic nature versus nurture question, just yeah. applied to national athleticism. It makes you think, though, could there be a connection or are we just seeing patterns we want to see? Mm. OK, let's maybe ground this a bit more. Let's shift to some more uh, concrete data points our sources highlighted, things that point to these really deep prehistoric roots. Good idea. OK, first one. Over half, more than 50% of Bulgarian men belong to Y-DNA haplogroups that trace right back. We're talking Neolithic farmers from Anatolia and hunter-gatherers from the Balkans itself. That's incredibly deep. We're talking thousands and thousands of years of continuity right there. Yeah. And here's a quirky one, maybe. Lactose tolerance. Ah, uh, yes. The milk thing. Right. Bulgaria has one of the lowest rates in Europe. Only around 15-20% of people are lactose tolerant. Which is significant because... Because high lactose tolerance is often seen as a marker of mixing with Western European populations who adapted to dairy farming much earlier or differently. So this low rate in Bulgaria suggests less mixing, minimal absorption of those particular gene lines. Interesting. It reinforces that isolation idea or at least distinct patterns of interaction. And one more. A 2019 EU-funded study looked at mitochondrial DNA. Passed down the female line this time. Exactly. It found Bulgarians have one of the highest percentages of shared mtDNA with ancient Bronze Age populations from the steppe. The Pontic steppe migrations, yeah. Yeah. Possibly linked to the spread of Indo-European languages. That's the theory. So you take these different points, the Neolithic farmer roots, the low lactose tolerance, the Bronze Age steppe connection, mm -hmm. and together they really do paint this picture, don't they? A population with, yes, some isolation, but also really distinct migration influences compared to a lot of other parts of Europe. It really reinforces that genetic crossroads idea, doesn't it? Or the vault idea, a place where all these ancient threads just st stuck around. Yeah, they persisted often in higher concentrations than you find elsewhere. It's quite remarkable. Okay, now let's move into an area that our sources flagged as, well, pretty sensitive and politically charged. Right, this next part needs careful handling. We need to talk about the debate around the Roma and Turkish genetic contributions because, of course, Bulgaria has large Roma and Turkish minority populations, ethnically diverse. Absolutely. Yeah. And undeniably, they contribute their own distinct genetic strands to the country's overall gene pool. That's just a fact of population genetics. But there's a controversy here. Yes. On one side, our sources point to... Uh, certain ultranationalist groups or viewpoints. Okay. And these circles tend to reject this diversity. They promote an idea of a pure or true Bulgarian blood that needs to be kept separate. Which sounds like... It's essentially a biopolitical argument, using biology or a warped version of it to push a political, often exclusionary agenda. Mm. And historically, that kind of thinking is, well, dangerous. Okay, so that's one perspective rooted in ideology. What's the scientific perspective on this diversity? Well, flip the coin. And many geneticists actually argue the opposite. Yeah. They'd say this very diversity is likely a source of strength for the Bulgarian genome. How so? Because mixing different genetic backgrounds, Slavic, Thracian, Turkic, Balkan, Roma, and others, often leads to greater variability, especially yeah. in the immune system. It can make a population more resilient, more adaptable to different diseases or environmental changes. So from a purely biological view, diversity is good. Generally, yes. Genetic diversity is often seen as an advantage for a population's long-term health and survival. Wow. So you have science saying diversity is a strength and this nationalist ideology rejecting it. Exactly. And that clash. It's turned the whole topic of the Bulgarian gene into a real flashpoint in politics there. It really highlights that tension, doesn't it? How do you balance scientific understanding with national identity, especially when identity gets weaponized? It's a huge challenge. How do societies process scientific findings when they intersect with deeply held beliefs about who we are? It's not easy. No, definitely not. Okay, let's shift again from the physical and the ethnic to something, well, maybe even more speculative. Mental traits. Uh, the brain power theory, as some sources called it. Yeah. It's often noted, apparently, that Bulgarian education systems, historically anyway, have kind of 
punched above their weight in international rankings, especially in areas like math, sciences. Right. And this observation led some researchers down a particular genetic path, Which is... looking at a specific, quite rare gene variant called DRD47R. Okay, DRD47R, what's that linked to? Broadly speaking, it's associated with traits like novelty-seeking, risk-taking, maybe creative problem-solving, adaptability, traits related to dopamine pathways in the brain. And the Bulgarian connection. Is that this variant seems to appear slightly more frequently in the Bulgarian genetic samples they looked at compared to some nearby populations. Just slightly, but enough to note. Hmm. And from that, people are drawing bigger conclusions. Well, some have speculated, and it is speculative, a link between this slightly higher frequency and what they see as a pattern in Bulgarian history. Which... This idea of cultural brilliance under constraint. You know, examples like preserving the Cyrillic script during occupations, or later thriving in fields like mathematics and computer science, even under political suppression. Like, adversity breeds ingenuity, and maybe there's a subtle genetic component nudging that along. That's the hypothesis, essentially, that maybe there's a slight predisposition towards adaptability and problem solving that manifests culturally under pressure. But the counter argument must be pretty strong here, too. Oh, absolutely. Many would argue very strongly that these are cultural and historical outcomes, plain and simple, not genetic ones. So what specific cultural factors would they point to? Things like a strong national emphasis on education, maybe passed down through families, a rigorous competitive school system historically, mm -hmm. perhaps even the sheer necessity of being clever and adaptable when facing political or economic challenges for centuries. Mm -hmm. They'd say the environment selected for or rewarded those traits culturally. So it's correlation, not causation again. The gene variant might be slightly more common, but that doesn't mean it causes the educational success. Exactly. It's incredibly difficult to untangle genetics from culture, history, and environment when you're talking about something as complex as intelligence or national achievement. It's an intriguing idea, but yeah, yeah highly speculative. Okay. So... We've covered ancient roots, physical traits, ethnic debates, even brain power theories. This brings us finally to a really crucial point, the ethics of it all. Yes, this is maybe the most important takeaway. Because with all this unique data, Bulgaria, or maybe science about Bulgaria, is walking a kind of tightrope. Definitely. On one side, you have researchers genuinely excited. They see the Bulgarian genome as this amazing living laboratory. Right, a unique window into ancient DNA human migrations, how populations persisted. It offers real scientific value for understanding deep human history. But then there's the other side, the danger. The danger, exactly. There's a very real fear, and our sources highlight this, that these findings, however interesting scientifically, could be twisted. Twisted how? Misused to promote those ideas of racial purity or nationalism based on bloodlines, especially, you know, given political shifts towards the far right that we've seen in various places, not just Bulgaria. So the science itself isn't the problem, but how it might be interpreted or used politically. Precisely. It raises fundamental questions. Can science study unique genetic heritage responsibly? How do we do that without inadvertently fueling harmful nationalism? And that other big question, should our DNA define our identity anyway? Identity is so much more complex than just genes, isn't it? It absolutely is. It's culture, history, language, personal experience, choice. Genetics is just one small piece, but it's a piece that can be easily misunderstood or misused. These conversations are tough, but vital. We need to understand the stakes. So wrapping this up then, we've seen how digging into one nation's genetics, the Bulgarian gene, tells this incredible story. Ancient continuity, maybe physical resilience, definitely unique historical paths, maybe even intellectual adaptability. Really complex picture. But it's also a story tangled up with modern politics, identity debates, and some really tricky ethical challenges. Mm -hmm. The deep dive really shows it's not just about biology, is it? It's this fascinating intersection of science, history, and how we define ourselves. Absolutely. And it leaves you, the listener, with some big questions, I think. Does looking at ancient DNA like this reveal untapped strengths, maybe medical, maybe cultural, that could benefit modern societies? Mm -hmm. Or are we just reading too much into history's genetic leftovers? Are we risking creating new divisions by focusing on these kinds of differences? What really stands out to you from this deep dive into the Bulgarian gene? That's a great question to leave people with. Maybe think about how these kinds of insights, not just for Bulgaria, but anywhere, might change how you view national identity or just the role genetics plays in understanding yeah. who we all are. Yeah, lots to think about it.